Michael Polish. We go way back. Way I've back. been a fan of your films and your take on life for a very long time. You're wrapping out my time here, right. which is very special in and of itself. But let's uh, talk about your movie, all right? You. Since right. that's why we're Still here, Big here. Big Sur. Right. Uh, and I, I think in film films, it's always interesting to me how, as human beings and things, we kind of get on these waves when we need to, to re-examine stuff. Right. Right. And it seems like Jack Kerouac obviously yeah. is in one of these periods where everyone wants to kind of figure it out. Right. And I personally really love this aspect of him right. because it takes away the glamour of it. Right. It right. lets you know kind of who he right. who he was and what happened to him. And the fascinating part about it for me, which I don't know if you meant this intentionally, was kind of the, the, the start of the movie about um, how he disintegrated with fame. Right. Yeah, and yeah. that's so interesting in our culture because I feel like especially in, in Hollywood and actors so much back it used to be about the work right. and the actors and now it's just kind of all about fame. Yeah. How can you get famous? How yeah, can you he get was, this name? He was truly an unconventional celebrity at that time mm -hmm. where fame was brought upon somebody who was basically a working man. He was athletic the way he wrote, mm -hmm. the way he approached life, whether it be drinking, writing, he played sports and he approached writing the same way. And that kind of fame wasn't used to, used to it. He became the king of the B generation. Mm -hmm. And you look at somebody that deteriorated that quick, and what do we do at that point? And that's what fascinated me about Big mm -hmm. Sur. And we always know the ending is sometimes more fascinating mm -hmm. than the beginning. Mm -hmm. And Jack Kerouac had that. Definitely. And that ending uh, part of his How old is he during this time? He was just 40. Oh, my gosh. Just 40. And it was a few years after because on the road didn't it wasn't an instant success so he mm -hmm. wrote a few more books and then from the new york in new york there was a writer that said that he's the generation this is the king of the beatniks and then it just became that was it and that i love it. all that stuff about the all these kids and yeah. tennis shoes yeah. and, and jack benny the, pants. the yeah. show and then when he got on the show it it reminded me of when i first read the novel it reminded me of barfly mm -hmm. you know it was like mm -hmm. barfly on the coast mm -hmm. and when Mickey Rourke did that tremendous performance, and I said, we kind of need to do something like that in a, in a, in a, in a way. Mm -hmm. The the use of narration, right. I love, the whole movie was, I mean, how much actual dialogue is in the film? Oh, that's a good one, because his spontaneous prose, which mm -hmm. he was known for, were pages and pages, because his lack of punctuation left no period so I was to take pages and put them on and pages to put, mm -hmm. and then I would create scenes within those prose and so you'd probably say 40 to 50 percent are is acted scenes and the other 50 percent is narration mm -hmm. and it was to make a Kerouac movie not a movie about Kerouac and it would mm -hmm. it was to kind of get into that rhythm so you were always in that rhythm that hit his speech that's great well, well I, I hope you have a great Thanks. festival up here it's great to Appreciate see you it.